What's up guys, Ken Ross here, coming at you with another tutorial, and yesterday on my tutorial, or this might be going up the next day, so my last tutorial, the uh, Wiggle tutorial was, <clears throat> I asked for 10 likes and you guys like threw that out of the park, you gave me almost double, so yeah, I'm going to give you this 3D uh, motion tracking tutorial with my twist on it, and uh, it's going to look sick, so I'm really excited and I'm really happy that you guys gave that to me, so thank you very much, so um, yeah, pretty much in After Effects, we just have our basic cinematic here. So now we're just going to go to composition, add to render queue. Click on the best settings, make sure the frame rate is 59.94. The output mode is a JPEG sequence. Format options, we want this on 10 because the pictures look way better. Um, the output too, this is really important, so make sure you put it to your desktop and you make a new folder. I'll just call it um, motion. And then you want to put it in the for to uh, in the folder. And I'll show you why in a second. So it's going to render that out. <clears throat> but yeah, thank you so much for all the likes and comments on that tutorial, guys. That that's what makes me keep keep me going, because it's awesome to get feedback like that, positive or negative. It's it's nice to get constructive criticism too. So if you always have tips, you know, make sure to let me know. And there we go. We're done with the render. So we're just going to minimize After Effects. Hello, Mr. Guitar Man. And Skype. <clears throat> okay, now you just want to head into Buju. Um, you're going to want to import your sequence and then go to the motion folder. And then that's why it saves, uh, for every frame, it saves the JPEG. So that's why. Click on the first one, hit open. Um, hit the frame rate, 59.94. If you have the new Buju, you have to do it again sometimes. It won't, up do it won't update. Um, yeah, hang on, it's like my dog's barking like crazy. Alright, sorry about that, I'm back. But yeah, you want to make sure that you hit it twice, because sometimes it'll, like, reset. But you have to have, if you have the new Buju, your frame rate will be there. If you have the old Buju, you have to go to Edit Camera, and then change your frame rate on there. So now we just, now that that's in there, we just want to go to Track Features and hit Start. Let this do its thing. It shouldn't take too long, but sometimes if you have a longer clip, obviously, it's like, it's like a render. It's going to take a little bit longer. So yeah, for this moment, I'd just like to say this is a long tutorial, so I'm going to ask you guys to please like the video um, and give me ideas for new tutorials. <clears throat> um, I'm always looking to come come out with new tutorials. You guys love them the most, so just please let me know what you want to see so that I can continue to do that, because if I don't know what to what to do, then it's kind of hard to make them. But uh, yeah, I just finished exams for school, so I should start being active again if I've been inactive. Sorry about that. School comes first, so been off Xbox too and uh, yeah I gotta start playing that again so um yeah this is almost finished here and 100% Just gonna save that now we wanna go to camera solve optimize camera pass smoothness start this should take a little bit um, it should go faster sometimes mine freezes and then continues again so looks like it's about done here it's going to take all of these red things and make them into blue and yellow dots, which I'm sure you guys have seen a lot. So, there we go. Now we see we have all these tracking points on the ground. Now, this is a really important part that people will always mess up. So, we're going to want to go to scene geometry over here. Click add coordinate from hint. Make sure this is on origin. Now, where you want your text to be, that's where you put this. So, we're just going to go to the middle find a point that's in the middle where we want our text to be then hit connect to selected I'll go add coordinate from hint make sure this is on x-axis drag this down now we want to click something that goes across the screen left to right but it's it's gotta be in the the field of view of our of our cinematic so if our middle point was like right here our x is gonna go from here we wanna click one hold control click another one and that goes from the through the x-axis of our point. So now we're going to want to go to um, whoops, add coordinate from hint. Go to z or z-axis. Click out of those. Now this is the depth. So something like this should be good. Right there. Now hit connect to selected. Update coordinate frame. Hit close. Add test objects. Now let's see how this turned out. That's beautiful. I think that looks really good. So that's how our text is going to look. 
I think it's okay that it's kind of on an angle like that. I think it gives it a new look, and it'll make it look better. So, yeah, we're good with that. Now I just want to go to get delete that test object. <clears throat> um, hit close. Hang on one sec, i got to change the batteries in my Astros. Alrighty, I'm back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so now we just want to go to export, export camera solve. want to browse. I'll just call this tutorial. Save it to my desktop. Hit save. Now for export type, you want to do Cinema 4D. Scale scene by 100. That's important, so don't forget that. Um, hit save. That Everything looks good. Now this will just kind of render out. I'm <clears throat> pretty much just making the Cinema 4D file so that we can go into Cinema 4D, put the text in, give the text motion, which is what I like to do. I think it makes it look a lot nicer, and that's kind of my twist to it. And yeah. Alright, so now that's done, we're just going to minimize Buju, head into Cinema 4D. We're going to go to our desktop and open this file. Hit OK. This is, this is going to look weird, but don't worry, that's alright. So now we just want to go to hold click on this and add a background. Double click here, add a new material, go to texture, click on that. Now we want to put in our, uh, we want to go back to our motion folder, put in the first J uh, JPG file. No, we don't want to create a new path. Click on that again, go to animation and calculate. Now some people export in AVI, but it makes the video lag, so that's why I don't like to do that. So we're going to drag this texture onto the background and woohoo! Look what we have now. So now that's staying in place because it's motion tracked, which is fucking awesome. I'm going to mo mo graph text object. We're just going to call, I'm going to move this text over first of all. We're just going to call this text um, tutorial. Take the height down a little bit. Make the font Babas. I think that looks pretty good. It's an all caps font, so that, I, that's why I like it a lot of the time. Take the height down a little more. Add some, make the depth about 40. Eh, we can do 30. Oh, we'll, do, we'll do 35. Just whatever looks good. I think that looks good. I'm going to just render that out. <clears throat> it looks alright, but it, it, obviously it doesn't look how it's supposed to look. So we're going we're gonna to go to, back to text object, go to caps, fill it cap, fill it cap, make the radius on these four. Then we want to go to make your new materials. I'm just going to load a material preset from Acres HD. Uh, I love his stuff, so yeah. I'm just going to make it black text with the blue outline. Put in our tag C1. Did a tutorial on that a long time ago, but yeah. So now we have our text, but it doesn't look right. I mean, I'm just going to rotate a little bit here. We want to make it so it has a shadow because it just kind of looks fake right now and that's not good so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go and hold click on this add a floor I'm going to make sure I'm squirting there take this material drag it onto the floor the, the material from the video and then put the projection on frontal then right click on the floor go to cinema 4d tags click compositing so let me see what that looks like obviously that's not right and I know you guys know that's not right so <clears throat> then we want to go and we want to add a light. So I just want to move this light. So we so we want to try and match it with the sun and create kind of a realistic shadow here. So we wanna, once on the shadow or on the light, we want to go and go to shadow and then do shadow map soft. We see this here, and obviously it still doesn't look right. So then we want to go on to um, onto the floor, and I go to compositing and untake self shadowing and take compositing background. Now we do this, and there we kind of have a slight bit of a shadow, and it's a reflection from the from the layer there. So now I'll show you what this looks like if you were to see it from the front which I'm sure you're actually kind of interested because um, you want to see what the shadow looks like. You see it can kind of create this darker type thing underneath so it looks really nice when you use it right. So we want to make sure we match our sun up and we can see that the shadows are going this way so that's what 
that's what looks nice in my opinion. Now it looks like it's actually more in the ground and more realistic. So now what we want to do is we want to make the text move. It's kind of boring if we just kind of scroll through here and yay, we have a text that's staying in one place. Woohoo. Big whoop, I know. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I'm just going to move this text over to the little bit, a little bit to the left. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to want to go to, to MoGraph, Random Effector. And here we have um, our strength and stuff. So we're going to want to keep the strength at 100. Yeah, looks like I need to scroll over there. Keep it at 100. Put, turn on scale and ro or click uh, position and rotation. Now I just want to kind of up this. And we actually want to put this on the uh, text object. Actually, hang on. We're going to delete the random effector. Click on the text object. Go to MoGraph. Then go to random effector. There we go. So now we want to scroll down and uh, take position position and rotation and you can see that's kinda messed up so we're gonna wanna kinda limit this on how it works um, yeah so it's just kinda all to your liking like like most of editing is it's how you want it and that's how it should always be so yeah we're just gonna add some rotation alright so now we have that and if I drag this up for you Oops, that's not the random effector. I want to drag. If I drag the text object up for you, it kind of looks like this. And now we're going to make it kind of come together. So we're going to go to the beginning of our clip. Make sure we're on the beginning of our clip. Go to the random effector. And on the strength, we're going to bring it down, or we're going to keep it at 100. My bad. We're going to keep that strength at 100. Then we're going to go and we're going to hold control and click on the strength thing. I'm gonna turn off Skype and click on the, and control and click on this little dot so you have a red so you just created a keyframe. Now we're gonna want to go to a little bit through. I'm just gonna go to 90 frames and then take the strength down to like five. And then now we're just gonna finish it off at 120. Oh, forgot to keyframe it. I'm gonna go to that 90. Just take the strength down to like five. Hold control, click this again to create another keyframe, and then go to all the way to the end. Bring this to zero, hold control, click again for another keyframe, and now here's what we have. Kind of just like pops up. And again, if you want to change this stuff, you can always change it to make it like more uh, drastic. If you want to do that, you would just have to re keyframe it. So yeah. But now we have the text, and it's kind of like halfway in the ground, halfway out of the ground. It doesn't really look real good. So now what we're going to do. So we're going to go to the text object. We're going to drag it. Make sure we're at the beginning of our clip. We're going to drag it all the way down below the floor. So now we have no text there. Make sure we're at the beginning of our clip again. And then we're going to go and make a keyframe. I'm going to go to like 80 frames. Drag this up. Drag it up higher so we can get kind of a bouncing effect going. Make another keyframe. And then all the way to 120, and I'm going to kind of drag this down a little bit. And then create another keyframe. So now here's what we have, the finished product. So it kind of just pops up. And when it pops up, it's kind of coming together, and then we have a nice little effect there. So yeah, if we can see our shadows here, again, it just kind of makes it look a lot more realistic. And you could even move that light a little bit ways back if you wanted to. Oops, did not mean to do that. You can even move that light, like I said, a little bit back and make it a little more realistic to make it look more like a sun. Oops, that doesn't do anything. But maybe you see I did that too much, obviously. So yeah, it's just all just playing around with it, making it look right, making it look to you, to how you like it. So that's what's really important, guys. Remember when you're editing, it's supposed to be how you like it. So now our shadow's back there. That looks really realistic um, can, compared with the other shadows that are coming back, like this way and stuff. So yeah, um, that's pretty much the tutorial. This Again, this is how to make things look a lot better. Um, if you want me to drag this into After Effects and put color correction on it and put some optical flares in it and show you guys how to make that look really nice, I can. Just leave, um, let's just say if we get 15 likes on this tutorial in the first week, I'll do that, and you also have to request it in the comments. Um, so yeah, I need to know that you actually want it. 
But uh, yeah, so 15 likes, that would be awesome. Um, that's pretty much the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed as this was a long tutorial, obviously, but I think it's worth it. And I'll check you all later. I'm out. Peace. which is kind of an important thing so obviously the video's not over so yeah for the rendering settings you just want to click on this over here um, go to output make sure this is all frames um, then go to save save this wherever you want I just call it tut and I save it to my desktop and you want to save it as a quick time movie um, go to anti-aliasing go to best go to animation and then options nothing there if you guys have a really fast computer and a lot of time to render this like like three or four plus hours go to ambient occlusion and take that but I don't have that kind of time what it does is it really makes the shadows and the reflections look really good like I said I don't have that kind of time but yeah that's really all for the rendering settings so yeah that's the end of the tutorial like I said 15 likes make an Adobe After Effects tutorial for what to do with this now or anything you guys request um, but yeah I'll check you later I'm out peace